Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, we'll go over the prototypal concept. We'll also go over the concept of prototypes and prototypal chains. Though I did cover the prototypal inheritance in one of the videos, the link for that can be found down below. Also in the subsequent videos, you will learn about a new topic which is classes that makes use of prototypal concept only under the hood. So this topic is definitely one of the most important topic that you must be aware of. Now let us first understand what are constructor functions. Till now we have learned about functions and how we can make use of them in our code base to define reusable pieces of logic that can be triggered as and when required using required parameters that they may require. Now there is another type of functions which are called as the constructor functions. And also when we will learn about classes which is in the next video, you will see that they also under the hood will make use of the constructor functions. But again understanding a constructor function does help in making a knowledge of classes more concrete in the next video. Now constructor function is a very special type of function that serves as a blueprint for the objects. Now it can hold properties and methods and the objects can then be created using the new keyword. Now let us define a constructor function which can define a blueprint for a person object. So what I will do is I will define a function and using the first character in uppercase I will say person and then I will pass some arguments to it so name age gender and is gamer and then now as a convention the constructor function always will start with the very first character as uppercase character then we can set the properties on the class so this age is set to age first name okay so this dot name is set to name this dot gender is set to gender and this dot is gamer is set to is gamer so let us proceed further now you cannot expect this function to return an object because we don't have a return keyword in our constructor function but then how does the new object gets created once the constructor function is called now this is because of the new keyword okay which we will see how we can make use of it the new keyword under the hood will set to this keyword which we are using in the constructor function it will set this this keyword to the new object that is getting created and once all the properties are set on the object that is being created during the invocation of the constructor function which means all the properties are now set on the object and are getting referenced using the this keyword. Now finally it implicitly under the hood will return the this keyword to us. So once the constructor function is done with the execution you will get the new instance using the blueprint that you have defined here. Okay. Now this is what the new keyword does under the hood when you call the constructor function using new keyword. As simple as that. Now we, let us understand how the constructor functions work and why the new keyword is important for creating new instances based on these constructor functions. To create a person instance using this constructor function, what we can do is we can say so to create a person object based on the blueprint that we have defined in the constructor function. I can say const person object new person so I'm using the new keyword and then I will trigger the constructor function so I'll pass arguments that is required by the constructor function which is name a gender and is gamer so name is set to a string so I will say Alex age 21 which is a number then a string which is gender and then a boolean is gamer so I will set that to two. And if I now log person object dot name and let us see the output in the browser. So let's make a reload. Okay. So is my live server running or not? Okay, so we are getting Alex as the output. Now let us proceed further. 
So let us understand the concept of prototypes and prototype inheritance. Now we know how we can create an object using the person constructor function. This new keyword basically will help you to create a new instance based on the constructor function, based on the blueprint that you have defined inside the constructor function. Okay. So let's proceed to prototypes. Now one thing you need to understand about the JavaScript language is that it is not a pure object oriented programming language, but it's based on prototypes and make use of something called as prototypal inheritance. So I do have a video on prototypes in my complete independent series on JavaScript objects. The link for that can be found down below. So in the example above, we saw how we can define a constructor function for person. So every constructor function that you can make has a special prototype property, which is not added to the objects that you create based on it. You need to understand that whenever, whatever you define on the prototype, will sit in a shared memory space and not on the individual object that you create using the constructor function. Now this prototype is then available on the object that you instantiate using the constructor function, but the prototype is always defined on the constructor function. Now this means that the prototype defined on the constructor function is then assigned to the instance or the object upon creation. Now using the prototypal concept, you are able to define shared space or properties and methods which you can share across multiple instances that you create based on the blueprint that we are defining inside the constructor function. So in my video on prototypes in JavaScript objects playlist, I discussed about the concept of prototypal chains, wherein I discussed that if a certain property is not available on an object, we traverse up the prototypal chain to look for the same property on the prototype of the object and you will keep on traversing up the prototypal chain all the way until you reach the end of the chain and didn't find that property anywhere. The end of the prototype is object.prototype which is the prototype of the global object. So if you find the value corresponding to that property, we return that otherwise we are not able to find the property value at any level of prototype. It simply returns undefined, indicating that the lookup for the property failed. Now this concept has been explained in a very detailed manner using diagram. I would highly recommend you to check out that video to get a hold of the concept of prototypal chain and lookup of properties. Now one thing to note from that what I told you is that prototype in turn will also have its own prototype. So on the object that we just created, which is person object, if I log, if I console dot log person object dot double underscore proto double underscore and let us see the output in the browser. So you can see we are getting an object and that holds the constructor function. So on the object that we just created, which is the person object, on logging we are getting this object. So we'll get all the methods and properties that are available on the prototype of a person object. Okay. So here we are having the constructor function, which is, uh, it is available on the prototype of a person object, which is based on the person constructor function. Now, if you try to access any property that is not available on the person object object, then you can always look up for its prototype. And if that property is not is found there, your lookup for the value of that property will come out to be successful. Otherwise it failed as simple as that. So I've discussed this in that video. Now what I will do is if I say console.dir and pass the person constructor and log this to the console, let us see what we get. Now you can see we have a bunch of properties and methods. Uh, we, ha we are having a bunch of properties defined on the constructor function, which as we know that function are also objects. Now here you can see we have a prototype property as well as, well as a double underscore proto double underscore property as well. 
you just have to remember some key points. One is that each and every object in JavaScript has this double underscore proto, double underscore property, which is also called as dunder proto property. Each and every object will have this property. And this includes our functions as well, because in the end, we know that functions are also objects. And that is why on logging the constructor function to the console, you can see we are having a dunder proto property here as well. Because in the end, we know functions are objects. Even arrays and other data structures that we cover like maps, sets, also have these properties because these are also objects in the end. Now second you can see we have a prototype property. And this property exists only on function objects and not on any other object for that matter because JavaScript is a prototypal based language. So this property which is a prototype property will only exist on function objects. Now one thing I want to show you, if I log, okay, so on line 17, if I log, person dot double underscore proto, double underscore, and I do a strict equality comparison with person dot prototype, and go back to the browser to see the output, we can see we are getting false. Now double underscore proto as I told you earlier is something that you will see most often with prototypal chains. Now the prototype that you defined on the constructor function as I earlier told you is a shared space in which you can define some shared properties, methods that you want to be accessible to each and every object that you build up using the constructor function that we just defined. So if I want to define a method for logging the person information to the console, I would have to define it on the shared space and not on the class, uh, not on the function itself. So I will have to define that on the constructor functions prototype and not directly on the constructor function. Okay. So you will have to define it on the shared space, which is the constructor functions prototype. So that is shared across multiple instances that we create. So what I will do is I will define a method and this method will not go on the person constructor function. It will go on the prototype of the person constructor. So I can say person dot on the prototype, which is the shared space for our properties and methods. I will define a method on the prototype log person information. This is a function expression and I will log console.log this dot name is is a this dot gender this dot okay so let me see what properties we are having and this dot age years old so we are using template strings as you can see and if i say gamer status so that is a boolean property this dot is gamer okay so that this keyword inside your method define on the prototype will always refer to the person object on which you call the method. So this, this keyword, okay, it is basically pointing to the object on which you will call this method, okay. So we'll be calling the log person information method on some object and the, this keyword in that case will refer to that object, okay. So I hope I made it crystal clear. So this method, which in this case is log person information is the method and the person object on which you will call, you will be calling it will be, the, will be inferred using the this keyword. Now this can easily be inferred from the rules of the this keyword that I covered in a separate video on this keyword. The link for that is also down below. So to conclude, we use prototypes to basically save the performance of the code, defining a method on the shared space and not directly on the constructor function 
or not directly on the individual object again and again as and when you create new objects. Now defining the methods in a shared space makes it available as a single source of data. As and when an object requires certain shared property or method, it can directly refer to shared space using this prototype property which we discussed here and access or work with it. This prototype adds to the optimization of your code and prevents the wastage of memory that happens in case if these shared methods had been allocated individually on each and every instance that you create. Indeed an important feature to be aware of. Now what if you want to define some other prototype on the existing object instead of the default prototype that you are having. Now let us see how we can achieve that. Let us define a new object and call it as game object. So const game object and I will set the title for the game as counter strike and then I will define a property called as stars set that to 5 and if I now log the game object dot dunder proto which is the double underscore proto double underscore property on the game object so let's check the output in the browser okay so we'll get our default prototype but that is what we don't want let us change it to the prototype that we want so let us log console.log object dot get prototype of which is a method on our global object object and pass the game object to it so let us see the output for this in the browser so you can see we are again getting the same default prototype of the game object that we got earlier okay to achieve what we want we can make use of another method on the global object which is object so it is called as the set prototype of method so what I will do is I will say object dot set prototype of and I will define game object because I want to set or overwrite the existing prototype with a new prototype so in the second argument we can define a new prototype for our object by overriding the one that we got after the object was created. So I can say log game information. So I'm defining a new prototype. I'm overriding the default one and on the prototype which is a shared space. I'm defining a new method log game information. So I'll set that to a function expression. And I will say console.log using backticks and then I will say this dot title is an awesome game and I will give it this dot stars okay And if I now log the log game information method on the game object, so I will say game object dot log game information method. So this way we can define a prototype on the object that we haven't created using some constructor function. So we are creating a prototype on a normal object using object dot set prototype of. Let us see the output in the browser. So you can see we are getting counter strike is an awesome game and I will give it 5 stars okay. So this should work because we have now overridden the default prototype with our defined prototype and on logging to the console you can see we are getting the desired output. Now whatever prototype you defined here for the game object will again have its own prototype. It is indeed tough to understand but this is how it works and the same concept of prototypal chains will then hold here as well. 
So this is how you can overwrite the default prototype of an already existing object. So this was all about the video on prototypes and prototypal chains. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, enable the notifications for all upcoming uploads by hitting the bell icon and do share the channel with your friends and colleagues. Let's catch up in the next video.